Hello, this is Marcus Rupley from Silicon Studio, and today we're going to demonstrate how to choose the correct lighting mode for a scene. First, let me show you a scene that is already optimized. You can see how the light affects all of the meshes in the scene, and the quality of the meshes have been adjusted for performance. Smaller objects such as the light post, rocks, and statues are probelit. The large mountains in the distance have greatly reduced lighting quality, but because of the distance from the camera, it's not noticeable. Now I'm going to disable enlighten in this scene. In the world settings, check disable enlighten. You can immediately see how the scene changes and how enlighten's indirect lighting affects the scene. The foliage gets most of its lighting indirectly and the shadows create areas of complete darkness. Now I'm going to turn enlighten back on to take a closer look at the scene. Here you can see the enlighten quality in the scene. Complex meshes have been set to probe lighting to improve their performance. Let's take a look at a mesh that is not optimized. All of the lighting for probelit meshes are calculated based on the probes in the scene, and not on just the mesh. Looking at this mesh, you can see that it uses 64 pixels in total, 8 by 8. When looking at a mesh that should be using light map pixels, you can see that even though it is much larger, both meshes are still using the same amount of lightmap pixels. While we're here, let's take a closer look at this mesh. This pillar here is made up of two meshes with different lighting qualities. Taking a look at the lightmap charts, you can see how the lighting affects meshes differently and the seam that appears between them. This effect of the seam can be lessened by adding a material on the mesh. You can see how the seam disappears once the material is visible. Meshes set to contribute probe use both the data from probes and radiosity on a mesh. This is useful for complex meshes that require more lighting detail. For example, take a look at the foliage in the scene, specifically the trees. These trees are set to contribute probe. If we go ahead and set the trees to probe without using the radiosity and run a pre-compute again, you'll be able to see the difference. Since each tree is so large, Probe lighting causes the lighting and shadows to have less of a difference across the mesh of the tree. Now, let's set the tree to using light maps without the probes. After we run a pre-compute, you can see the difference in the shadows of the trees. However, the leaves don't have proper lighting. By using probes with the contributing radiosity together, we're able to give a realistic look to the trees. In this scene, we're using shared light maps for the smaller foliage. Normally, calculating the light of all of the shrubs and smaller foliage would be very expensive at runtime. But since these are all sharing the same lighting values from the landscape, we can get quality lighting in real time. As a shared light map gets farther away from the source, the difference becomes more noticeable. This is why the taller foliage and the trees cannot use shared light maps. Shared light maps are also useful for other flat surfaces, such as a wall with a decal or poster attached to it. Thanks for joining us for this video, and we'll see you next time.